Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. This is a treat hello, for me, for everyone. We are here with the Nomadic Boys, two of my favorite people in the world, online and in the real world. How are you guys? Oh, um, uh, I'm blushing now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's true. No, oh, thank you, Matty. Hello from us. Hello from us. I'm I'm Stefan. Yep. And this is I'm Sebastian. Or better known as Sebi. Sebi, yes. Sebi, the French man. So even before we get started, um, I was just, you know, I just throw in there, you know, it's interesting because I would just say when it comes to the world of blogging and content creation, social media, I think a lot of us realize you guys have really started early and really mastered that, but you do something different. You stay very, you stay very engaged with your audience. It's not just like you talking to them or at them, but, but with them. And I say that because when we first met, I believe it was Buenos Aires and we were on a trip together. And it was felt like I knew you. It's like we knew each other. Uh, we we didn't have to go through that introductory phase because we knew each other online because we had already engaged with each other online. You guys are. Love that. That's love my. That. That's, Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. I love that. But I think that's one of my takeaways for how you guys have been so successful over these years is that uh, is that um, you started um, what in 2014. But yeah, tell us a little bit about kind of how you got started and uh, and uh, the direction you guys have gone since then. Yeah, we, we we've just celebrated our ten years. Um, how oh it God, started? Yes. How it started? Yeah, remember? Um, we met in London. I'm I, that's where I grew up. Sebi uh, moved there as a young innocent boy from France, looking yeah. for his love in his life. <laughs> mm. And um, I we were in very uh, city nine to five jobs when we met. I yeah. was a lawyer. He was a computer programmer, and we were toddling on with that. And, we, and Sebi said to me that I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay in London. I want to travel the world. I want to be based in Barcelona for a year. I want to go to Buenos Aires. I want to go to Australia. I want to see the world. And I was thinking, yeah, you know, and, and when you remove from the equation, um, mortgages, school fees, you know, all those things our straight friends were aspiring to, it kind of made you realize, well, what the hell am I doing in this full-time job here? So we built a plan and started to save for about two years. Um, and then 2014, we left it all for a big trip in Asia that was meant to be, uh, it was like a, a one year sabbatical. He was gonna do online websites, designs, and I was going to teach English as a way to earn money while traveling. Um, we started Nomadic Boys as a way to sh for friends and family to follow our trip. And also because Sebi's mother worries so much about everything he does. And it started with videos of Sebi saying, bonjour la France, and saying to his mother, I'm okay, I'm here. And, and then we wrote a bit on online and it was just our silly stories and photos of us um, in, in, in Russia on the Trans-Siberian or in Mongolia or in China and et cetera. And then about a year in, we started getting some random people coming to the website who were finding our content because they'd Googled something like, um, where are the gay bars in Mongolia? Is it safe to travel in Asia? What's it like for a gay couple traveling in India? And around that time, as you well know, Matty, because you've been in the industry for centuries, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> ages. Um, there's, there's nothing online or there's very little online, good quality content online that answers these questions. So yeah. this one, this genius here with his online knowledge was like, well, you know, we can actually turn this into something more formal so we started changing the nature of what we were publishing um not more formal but more informational yeah i think that's that that was it because we didn't want to take away the fun the fun that we were having traveling and and we wanted to uh make sure that that translates you know in the writing and the photos and videos we were taking and i think that's how it started like very naturally um and, and mongolia was definitely the first destination that got picked up by a lot of publications because we 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 wrote an interview with the um, uh, the, the only um, owner of the, the the only gay bar in Mongolia, and we met the owner and did an interview with him, and that got picked up by a lot of publications. And then the blog grew like this. On the back of that, Stefan thought um, Instagram was just starting, and and uh, we thought we need to to to, to do something because we were making so many videos and photos, and we were not really posting them except Facebook. So we we created the Instagram account on the back of that and then that grew very quickly and he's doing it all because i am actually it's funny because with the two of us uh, running nomadic boys but he's doing all the social media so no, if, someone, pretend, is if someone is answering if someone is answering on nomadic boys you can be sure it's going to be here yeah, you got to pretend you do some of it my love Otherwise. yeah I, 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 <laughs> I just sit and smile 
<laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. But that's what's interesting is that um, is that I, I will also say, and I believe this with all my heart, that you guys are probably one of the best uh, examples of what a modern media company, especially LGBT, would look like because you kind of really combined the world of uh, a lot of you really understand the power of written content the blog post, the utilizing photos and all that. And that's been a foundation. SEO loves it. You know, you've gotten yourself out there, but then you've also created video content. You're very strong with photos as, um, as we just mentioned, but then putting all that into all those different social media profiles. So that's where what's interesting is that you're also not, you don't have like any one profile that you're just exceptionally strong in. You're strong on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And so I think that's kind of a model that I wish more and more LGBT media companies would look at what you're doing and say, wow, we need to follow, we need to follow in that direction. Nice to hear that. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that, that's very kind. And, and we had to learn though. We, we, none of this was, uh, there was no information about how do you actually portray yourself online or how do you um, increase um, engagement and, and how do you make sure that you're out there? It's not, I mean, it's nice to, to put the photos and the videos, but you, we, we, didn't, we didn't know anything about SEO or social media or how to target hashtags. And I remember in Buenos Aires when we met, you actually helped us a lot with that because you you were all over uh, the hashtags on Twitter. I remember you 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 give us you gave us so many tips, and that really helped us. So we kind of um, for the past ten years uh, met so many people, and networking is so important in the LGBTQ media industry, and that all these people really helped us growing. And I think we. It's, it's a small world, but we all kind of get tips from each other on, you know, how to grow and how to, to, to make the best of it. So, yeah. Thank you for that, Matt. <laughs> it's, it's, like I said, it's heartfelt. And, uh, but the other piece that I like is a little different, but you have an interesting focus. You create these travel guides for Mongolia and different parts of Asia, but you also have this uh, segment where you focus a lot on the locals and uh, local travel. And I think that really helps set you apart as well. I love that content. Thank you. Thank you. That started with um, Zorik, the the guy who owned the only gay bar in Mongolia. Yeah. Um, I, I, ultimately, a guide is informational, but it's, let's face it, it's, you're not going to sit there and read it. It's a bit, it's a different type of reading. Um, blog posts are interesting mm -hmm. and, and everyone has a story, but the gay locals have a story to, to tell. And one thing we noticed when we get the whole, how dare you go to a country that has anti-gay laws is um, it's all well and good thinking that we used to think about ourselves until we actually did this. But then there are actually lo gay locals living there who kind of need visibility in some way and support. Um, and just finding a way to amplify their story is, does more than mm. sitting there saying, why don't you go to an anti-gay country? You know, it, 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 uh, we thought, and it's fun. It's also fun to do. But you guys have brought it all together into what I think was also great because when you're in the real world, it's nice to have something you could let people touch and feel and get a better sense of who you are, which is you've written a book. And uh, it seems like it's a really a culmination of everything we've talked about so far. Yes, 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 yes. We picked it up um, last month in Sydney. We're very proud of it. It's our baby. It's our baby. It's a two years project yes. in the making. So we're, we're so happy to see it um, comes to light. So out <laughs> in the world, that's all your baby. <laughs> And and from what we were talking about, the stories about travel guides, locals, and also just all the places you've gone, is this just in some ways uh, kind of an extension of a lot of what you have created, or are there is there something new in there as well? Um, the way we've um, agreed with the publisher to to, to uh, structure the book, the way we structure the book is we split it up into all the different continents we've been to, all of them except Antarctica, and we've picked highlights. Uh, from each destination, focusing on what are the gay highlights, but also what are our favorite highlights for each uh, continent. And then for each one, uh, some sort of story from our firsthand experience, and then some some just general practical safety tips and highlights of what to do. Yeah. Um, All of it is firsthand experience, but um, it's like, it's, 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 it's basically everything that you need to travel safely as um, a gay man or LGBTQ person wanting to travel. Travel, yes. Um, and what's what's different from the blog is the stories in there. There are stories actually, our uh, favorite stories uh, from traveling that we put in there. They just add this um, kind of personal uh, view on the destination, and they're actually quite cute and funny. Some of them. 
Um, so yeah, we're, we're very proud of it. And, and obviously every destination has um, the tips and advice on where to go, what to do. And it's all first-hand experience from, you know, 10 years that we have spent travel, so traveling. So yeah, it's... Yeah. No, this is great. And um, you mentioned safety and um, I'm working on a separate project where it's becoming more and more out there and prevalent seniors travel. The boomers are are retiring and they're looking for what they want to do. And have you ever had much experience or uh, touched on some of the needs or interests the, the, that's special and unique in the world of seniors travel? Well, what's interesting is a, um, a big part of our audience is actually senior travel. And a lot of them usually come to us because um, they're looking for something online and they find us on the blog. Some of them, I mean, are on social media, but most of them actually, they use Google. And when they come on the blog, they're looking usually for someone to um, organize the travels for them. And a gay company is usually what they're looking for. Uh, and that's the big difference, I think, between uh, senior travel and senior traveling and, and you know, young people out there who want to travel usually independently and on their own. Yeah. Uh, our blog touch is kind of both because we are aware of that when we write you know, what are the differently companies that we can recommend and that we, you know, we used in the past. Um, so a lot of, a, a lot of them come to us and say, I want to do an organized tour uh, to Bhutan or, or Thailand because I've never been to Asia. And, and usually this is, this is, this is the kind of needs that we've identified from um, our audience or senior audience. Yeah, no, that's really good info, especially for all the companies like Brand G and Source Events and so many others that have just been out there pursuing this for so many years. It seems like it's really coming into its own. So no, that's really good. Definitely. But, but no, my main focus I thought was just, uh, I'm just really glad that you guys were able to take a few moments of your time and not only share a bit with our audience of what you guys are up to, but also, uh, uh, especially when we post this, we're going to make sure all the links are there as well, because you have the book, it's on Amazon and probably quite a number of other places they could find it. Uh, but it comes out what, next month? Yes, uh, but it comes out on May 9th okay. in UK and then a week after in America and I believe a few months after yeah. that in Australia and across the world. And the book launch will be in London next month. Yeah, On my birthday, excited. May 7th. Yes, that's right, that's oh, right. Oh, it's your birthday. I remember Fourth it. Birthday. Before, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you got it. <laughs> sorry, we have our lag that 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 kicks kicks in once in a while. But no, this is great. And uh, like I said, looking forward to seeing you all in the real world again. And thanks so much for just being here with us. Thanks for having, thanks us, for having us. Yes. Right. Thanks.